Hello! Welcome to Pinder Kinder, where we love learning together. I am Mrs. Pinder, and I love learning with you at home. Who is here today? Oh, Brooke and Laura and Tucker. Hello, Asher and Beckham. I am so glad you are here to learn with us. Let's start the way we always do with a song. Today we are singing Down by the Bay, and I hope you have thought of some good rhyming words. Down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, back to my home, I dare not go, for if I do, my mother will say, did you ever see a fly wearing a tie? Down by the bay, down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, back to my home. I dare not go, for if I do, my mother will say. Did you ever see a moose kissing a goose? Down by the bay, down by the bay, where the watermelons grow, back to my home. I dare not go, for if I do, my mother will say. Did you ever see a bee up in a tree? Down by the bay. Great job! I hope you sing that song. Maybe you'll sing the verses we did yesterday and the day before, and maybe you'll make up some new verses. Very nice. I am glad you are here today because it is a science day. Today, we are going to learn about gravity. That's right. I just said this word. Say it with me. Gravity. Gravity is the force that pulls things together. Now, we all live on the planet Earth. And the Earth is big. So it is pulling us all towards it. We are all being pulled towards the Earth. You don't believe me? Okay, let's try it. Stand up. Move to a place where you won't break anything, and I want you to jump. Are you floating? Are you floating up to the ceiling? You're not. You went, you went right back down to the floor. That is because gravity pulled you down. Yes, today, our friends at Scholastic have two books about gravity. The first one is fiction. It is called Chicken Little, and it is about a silly character. She's fake because chickens can't really talk. And this chicken's name is Chicken Little. And she's walking around, and she says, The sky is falling! The sky is falling! Can the sky really fall? I hope you will read this book. You can click the link below and find out what happens to Chicken Little. Is the sky really falling? And then you can read the nonfiction book and you can find out what is gravity. Now, I want you to think, do you already know anything about gravity? So if you haven't heard this word before, do you know anything about things that can fall? What is something that if you hold it up, it will come down? Can you think of anything like that? Hmm, what are some things that go up and come down? Yes, balls, all kinds of balls. What is this one? Baseballs go up and come down. Okay, do you know what this one is? Ping pong. My kids love to play ping pong, and when they go to Maryland, they like to play ping pong with Caroline and Andrew and Bailey and Sydney. It's so fun. But this ball goes up and it comes down because of gravity. Now I have a big ball to show you. It's not a volleyball. It's not a soccer ball. It's a water polo ball. What will happen if I let go? Oh, it comes down. Gravity pulls the ball down. So balls come down. We found out 
kids come down because you just jumped. What else comes down? Yes. Leaves come down. After Pinder Kinder, you can look outside. Are there any leaves on your trees? Hmm, maybe not because it's winter, almost spring. It's spring. Winter's over. Have the spring leaves grown yet? But leaves do come down. What else comes down? Oh, you were thinking about trees. Nuts fall down. They fall off the trees. Huh, rain. Is it raining at your house? Yes. Gravity makes rain fall down. Yes. Anything else that falls down? Oh, you were thinking about spring on windy days. My family and I love to fly a kite. Now, if it's windy, the wind holds the kite up. But when the wind stops, gravity pulls the kite down. Is there anything else that comes down? Yes. Apples come down. And the scientist that discovered gravity, Sir Isaac Newton, he was looking at the apple tree when he discovered gravity. How many apples are in my tree? One, two, three, four, five. Will you make five apples out of your fingers? Way up high in the apple tree, five little apples smiled down at me. I shook that tree as hard as I could. Down came an apple. Mmm, <sniffs> it was good. How many apples are left? Can you subitize? Way up high in the apple tree, four little apples smiled down at me. I shook that tree as hard as I could. Down came an apple. Mmm, <sniffs> it was good. Way up high in the apple tree, three little apples smiled down at me. I shook that tree as hard as I could. Down came an apple. Mmm, it was good. Way up high in the apple tree, two red apples smiled down at me. I shook that tree as hard as I could. Down came an apple. Mmm, it was good. Way up high in the apple tree, one red apple smiled down at me. I shook that tree as hard as I could. Down came an apple. Mmm, it was good. So apples come down out of the apple tree and balls come down. Gravity pulls them down. I was wondering if you would like to learn how you could make a ramp for your balls. Now, some people like to go skateboarding on a ramp. We can't really go do much skateboarding right now because we're staying home, but you might have paper towel tubes. You might have toilet paper tubes, and you can use these to make a ramp. So I was wondering, do you have any balls or maybe wheels from your Legos. So after Pinder Kinder, you can look around. I am borrowing this from my son, Max. He has his own ping pong balls and his own ping pong paddles that he takes to his friend's house when we're not staying home. And he said I could borrow this. But look, it doesn't fit. Gravity can't pull the ball through the tube. So I am going to make something. I'm taking my scissors and I'm cutting the tube. Will you sing our scissor song? Get your invisible scissors. Open them, shut them, open them, shut them. Give a little snip, snip, snip. Then I'm opening the tube and let's see if it'll work. Hmm, will this ball roll? I'll be right back. The ball started at the top of the tube and rolled down. Gravity pulled it down. You could make a ramp out of a paper towel tube. You could cut a toilet paper tube and you could tape it on. Whoa, you could make a really big ramp. If you make a ramp, maybe you want to give me a picture. 
Now, I was even thinking, I made one before you got here. I took my paper towel tube and I put magnets on the back. A magnet is another type of force. And you could ask your grown up if you're allowed to stick it on your refrigerator. I don't have my refrigerator here, but I had this cookie sheet and I can stick my ramp on and then watch what's going to happen. Gravity pulled it down. Yes, it was up and it went down. Maybe you want to make a ramp and you want to try out gravity. The ball was up. Up is a sight word. Have you been thinking about your sight words? It's so great if you know your sight words. And you might say, I know how, I know the sight words. I can read that. It says up. But I was thinking, let's practice reading, spelling, writing our sight words, and writing them in a sentence. So get your paper and your pencil, and let's write the word up. Let's spell it first. U-P, up. Can you think of a sentence with up? Yes, great sentence. Anyone else? Oh, I love that sentence. So I'm going to write a sentence with up. You can write the same sentence as me, or you can write your own sentence. I want to write about an apple. The apple is up. Oh, I hear some more sight words. The apple is, that's a sight word, up. Let's write that, oh, up. Let's write that sentence. Will you say it with me? The apple is up. Oh, four words. Sometimes I like to write lines. You can write them if you want to. The apple is up. I didn't have enough room on this line, so I came down here. This, this is the sight word, the, but it's going to be the first word in the sentence. What type of letter do we always want as the first letter in a sentence? Yes, capital. Let's do capital T. The apple. I know how to spell apple because I know a song about it. A P P L E. Oh, you know that song? If you don't know that song, you can capital it. You can uh, copy it. The apple is. It's a sight word. Can you write up? The apple is. What do we always need at the end of a sentence? Punctuation. So I want to show you another sight word. It changes the whole meaning of the sentence. If you know it, read it. Not. Mm -hmm. Let's spell it. N-O-T, not. Can you think of a sentence with not? That's a good one. Oh, I love it. I'm going to use kind of the same sentence. The apple is not up. You can write that sentence or another one. The apple is not up. Oh, five words. The apple is not up. Do you want to write this sentence with me? Oh, so many of the words are right up here. I'm going to look. The apple is not. It's a sight word, but you can also stretch it up, stretch it out, up. Oh, I'm going to use an exclamation mark. Let's read these two sentences, and then after you can read your sentence. The apple is up. The apple is not up. Can I hear your sentence? Two snaps, you're an awesome writer. I love it. Let's keep doing math about apples. I'm going to draw an apple tree.
would you put some apples in your apple tree? Do you have more apples than me or less? Then put some apples on the ground. How many apples do you have all together? Apples in the tree, apples on the ground. You're going to combine. That's right. Do you want to make a number sentence? I'm going to look up here. Oh, how many apples do I have in my tree? You subitized. Five. How many are on the ground? If we combine, how many are all together? Yes. Can you think of a number sentence? Oh, some people say this. Five plus two equals seven. Yes. Or you can write five plus two equals seven. You can make lots of number sentences with your apple tree. I hope you will keep doing that. It is April, and April is National Poetry Month, so I have a poem for you about gravity. I'm going to read it to you. Listen for some rhyming words. Gravity. Gravity is what holds you down. Without it, you would float around. It is the force that makes you stay on the earth so you can play. When you trip, it is what makes you fall. Gravity affects us all. I don't know the author of this poem. It's unknown. But I hope you will read this poem again, and maybe you want to memorize it. For the rest of the day, you can be noticing, what is gravity doing? Is it pulling you down? When you jump, is it making you come back to the earth? Great job thinking like a scientist today. Touch your elbow. Skidamarink-a-dink-a-dink. Skidamarink-a-doo. I love you. Skidamarink-a-dink-a-dink. Skidamarink-a-doo. I love you. I love you in the morning and in the afternoon. I love you in the evening and underneath the moon. So skidamarink a dink a dink, skidamarink a doo. I love you and you and all of you. Thanks for learning about gravity with me today. Good job. See you next time at Pinder Kinder.